So I had one of my Milky Way workshop participants from this past summer recently reach out to me and he's running into an issue with trying to blend the long exposure foreground with the Milky Way sky image and have the tree line show in a natural manner. What's happening, if we take a look here, is you can see when he merged these, he ended up with this really fake looking kind of halo that showed up around the trees on the right edge here. You'll see a little bit on the left here. And really what's causing this is oftentimes when you've got your sky exposure and the foreground stays as this nice dark silhouette, you'll actually have a slightly thicker, if you will, uh, line of trees than you will on the long exposure foreground. Some of the brightness of that sky starts to shrink, shrink in on those trees. So when you blend these two together, you end up with that, that sort of halo effect that he's seeing here. Now, one of the methods that I teach, and I have a video about this that I'll link in the corner, um, is to use Photoshop's select and mask tool to really isolate and control really complicated foregrounds like this, really complicated isolations. However, I'm sure you've all heard of Photoshop's sky replacement tool. Everyone and their brother seems to use it nowadays to fake whatever sky, make every image look great. And that's fine. We can get into that whole ethical debate on uh, another topic. But we, I am going to use that as a really fast, simple way to do this replacement and avoid a lot of the haloing that you see here. So to do so, I'm going to just start by taking both of his, his original images here, but the sky and the foreground. I'm going to hold down Command on a Mac, right click, and choose Edit as Layers or Open as Layers in Photoshop. And what that's going to do is allow Photoshop to just pull these both in. It's going to merge them into a single document as separate layers, as you see here. Now, the first thing I always like to do with anything like this is to select both layers and make sure that they're aligned by going up to our Edit menu and choose the Auto Align Layers. Auto for the projection here is fine. We'll hit OK, let Photoshop read the images and get everything lined up nice and tight. And there we have that. Now you'll see if I zoom in on this and I turn the top layer on and off, it just pretty well confirms that everything's lined up reasonably well. So what I'm going to do first is select the bottom layer, which is our long exposure. And I'm going to go to the edit menu and choose the sky replacement tool. When I do, it's going to bring this up with the default sky replacements. And oddly enough, this is exactly what I'm going to use because all I'm really after from this is the mask tool. So I'm going to leave this one alone. All the defaults are fine for this. I'm going to output to new layers and hit OK. Now, it doesn't seem like anything happened because I've still got this sky as the top layer, but when I turn that off, you can see that it, it did a pretty good job of cleanly replacing the blown out sky for the, from this long exposure. Now, what I'm gonna do is take the existing mask that it created for the sky down here in my Layers tab. I'm gonna click and drag that up onto my sky image, the Milky Way image. We'll turn that on. Still looks terrible. I've got the sky layer here below. We'll turn that one off. And there you have it. Really easily replaced sky layer, right? Now, a couple things to double check. It left the corners here showing through a little bit. You can see some of the streaked sky or the streaked stars from the long exposure. And down at the bottom, I don't, I mean, this is personal preference here. I don't want to leave the long exposure of the reflection here. You see the streaked stars, you see some of these grasses that are a little distracting. So for demonstration purposes anyway, I'm going to show you just go ahead, select the mask that you dragged up above, grab your brush tool, I'm going to make that a little bit larger to work with, ensure that it's nice and soft with the hardness all the way down to zero. And first off, I'm going to just go up here and oh, I'm going to reverse the colors with my white selected. I'm going to remove that from the mask area here so that the sky shows through properly. And the same thing down in this lake area. I'm just going to brush out the long exposure sky and reveal the original from the single exposure frame here. 
Now you can blend this a little bit. You can change the opacity, the flow, whatever you like to try to do that. I'm just doing this quick and dirty to show the point. So there you go. The Milky Way sky is dropped cleanly into your long exposure foreground. There's a little bit of haloing around these trees that you still see here, but that's dealt with relatively easily in Lightroom. So you can go ahead, save this image, drop it back into Lightroom, finish any other edits, crops, anything else you might want to do with this. And what was that? All of 10 seconds it took to now drop this into a fairly complicated foreground. If you like this video, Hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.